Good afternoon, my name is Grace. On behalf of Whitehurst Primary School, I, I welcome councillors Rod Campbell, Peter Cox, Mark Maragoda and Barry Lyons. The City of Greater Benigo staff, Whitehurst Primary School students, parents and staff, and invited guests to today's launch of Stage 4 Consultants Report of the Integrated Transport and Land Use Strategy. The students, parents and staff of of Whitehouse Primary School have been specifically involved in the Active Travel Survey project and I invite Councillor Campbell to the microphone to launch stage four of, of consultants' report. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that the uh, City of Greater Bendigo is both um, Dajavarang, Dajavarang and Tongarang country, whose ancestors and their descendants are the traditional owners of the country, of this country, and we acknowledge that they've been custodians for many centuries and continue to perform age-old ceremonies of celebration, initiation and renewal. We acknowledge their living culture and their unique role, their unique role in the life of this region. I pay respects to elders past and present. I also would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, the Mayor, Barry Lyons, um, my other colleagues, Councillor Peter Cox, who's also on the steering committee. We've got uh, Councillor James Williams, Councillor Rod Fife, welcome, Councillor Lise Chapman, and I spotted Councillor Mark Wirigator. Have I missed any? No? A welcome to my colleagues. Also, uh, we don't have any politicians that I've spotted. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Welcome to the principal, of course. It's his ground here. And uh, also I'd like to welcome the children and the parents who are here today. And uh, a great welcome. Good to see you all. And also members of the steering committee uh, who are here today, the reference committee, and also the technical working group who have been working with this project called ITLUS. So it's a great pleasure to welcome you all uh, to the launch of Stage 4 of what is known as Connecting Bendigo. Connecting Greater Bendigo, that is the Integrated Transport and Land Use Strategy, more commonly known as ITLUS or ITLUS. So I'm going to begin today, as I look at Trevor Budge over there, I'm going to use one of his most uh, regularly quoted uh, uh, quotes from, and it comes from Henry Ford originally, we give acknowledgement to Henry Ford, and it goes something like this, if you always do what you have always done, then you will always get what you always got. Now Greater Bendio, City of Greater Bendio, can no longer continue to do what it's always done. To be Australia's most livable regional city, we, and that's what we aspire to do, we need to be innovative. We need to be prepared to make changes, and to do that, we need the community to work with us to make it happen. ITLUS offers a fresh approach about how to address our future transport and land use needs. When completed, the strategy will help council and other government authorities and the community as a whole plan for the sustainable growth of our city and how people and goods will move about within it. The stage development of the project has now reached a very pivotal point. Stage four has involved a significant body of work by some consultants named GH&D and they've set out the findings of, uh, that they've found from the many consultations that have taken place with the community at various levels over quite some time. And they're recommending the directions and ideas and proposed objectives and targets and actions for inclusion in the final ITLIS document when it finally evolves. So this is a stage getting very near to the end now and the next stage will be going to the community again to have a look at what's been done by the consultants in drawing all that information together and then that will come back again for further consideration and ultimate determination by the council. The report is designed to generate considerable public discussion, I've no doubt it will, so it's very important that our community's views be heard 
and incorporate it into that final strategy to be released next year. And the report is the culmination of extensive research and consultation and it will challenge the debate potentially about how we think about housing development, about our roads, about freight, about public transport and about our health and well-being as a whole. Increasingly, this is becoming an important matter. It caters for uh, the doubling of our population, whether it happens or not, it's catering for an expansion to approximately 200,000 people by 2041. And in line with the target identified uh, expansion possible in Lod Mallee South Region Growth Plan. And the report we're launching today includes five significant overarching objectives. Preventing urban sprawl and strengthening our activity centres. Providing convenient and effective public transport options. Improving the health and wellbeing of our society. Improving, uh, uh, enhancing the movement of our people and goods. Providing an innovative approach to planning and a clear path forward for the implementation. So a number of targets and initiatives are included to help these, and one, has, one, is to, one of those is to increase the percentage of school children who regularly travel to school by active transport mode to 80%, 80% by 2020. This is very important because if we can have children travelling to school using active modes, cycling or walking or scooting, they are not on the roads. Those parents are not obscuring our roads. We're using our infrastructure better. Mr Jenkins will soon speak more about the survey results that have been done here. But not surprisingly, kids do want to walk and ride to school. Their parents, though, are naturally concerned about safety. So creating a safe environment is very, very important. And... Uh, and we'll be working together to make this happen. We think this is quite achievable, and if we can do that, we're going to change significantly uh, the way we live and the and our health and the infrastructure demand. So I encourage the community to take the time to read the report and uh, let us know what works for them. I think it closes on the 22nd of December of this year. We'll be looking forward to feedback and, of course, that report will be on Council's website for people to, uh, to have a good look at. Before I close, I'd like to um, thank the principal and the school community for their cooperation and their interest in this particular project. Um, also, Michelle Sliger and Alex Duncan from La Trobe University for their contribution and the consultants as well, uh, GH&D, Mr Kevin Begg, and uh, to thank you once again for attending and showing your support for what is a very exciting project for our city and the one that will impact greatly on our livability for the years ahead. So I'll now uh, ask for cross over to Mayor Councillor Barry Lyons, who will now present uh, the school principal with a poster highlighting White Hills Primary School survey results and we thank you for your participation and collaboration in this. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure now to hand this over to Damien. Is it? And um, thank you for your contribution. And it's great to be here today to uh, launch this. So with that, I'll like to give you this. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank City of Greater Bendigo and I do have a prepared speech. I'll get behind the rostrum shortly and I do have my step for the vertically challenge too. But uh, we, we have uh, enjoyed partnering with City of Greater Bendigo to uh, be involved in the active travel survey. It's given us some baseline data from where we'll actually work from. So thank you to our councillors for your attendance today too. Um, these statistics at the moment, I know uh, it was talked about that we're looking towards a goal of 80% of active travel 
here at white hills at the moment we currently have thirty five percent of our children actively travelling to school so our goal is very aspirational but we are going to work very hard at that too but before i begin uh, just talking about the the actual report i've got a few thank yous to make i'd also first Firstly, I'd like to thank Michelle Slider and Alex Duncan from La Trobe University, who were the researchers who put the program or the survey together. Thank you to you, to you both. Uh, Trevor Budge, Manager of Strategy. Trevor, none of this would have happened without your first approaching the school and coming to our school council meeting, and we thank you for initiating that uh, initial approach. Catherine Rosinski, wherever Catherine is around too, hiding behind the back here. <laughs> Catherine's the Senior Integrated Transport Manager and Catherine's uh, facilit facilitated our interaction with other Northern Growth Corridor schools and with City of Greater Bendigo and other organisations such as the Ride to School organisation, uh, Bendigo and Northern District Community Enterprise. It has to be a combined approach to improving active transport and Catherine we thank you for your ongoing work as well and we look forward to continuing that in the future. Councillor Rod Campbell focused upon the infrastructure challenges of increasing active travel and I'd just like to talk to you about the report and some of the recommendations when it comes to infrastructure. The rec recommendations were identifying dangerous and busy intersections or crossings and continuing to increase pedestrian safety measures such as marked crossings. We know where those dangerous areas are and we understand the parental concerns around those and City of Greater Bendigo are really working actively to overcome those. We also need to extend our bike and walking paths and increase networks and connections for those on foot or bicycle. Uh, we have some great existing bike and pedestrian infrastructure, but there, are, there is gaps in that infrastructure and we do need to do more. And also increasing the visibility of signage on paths from streets to further promote their use. We couldn't believe it, but uh, some of our surveys came back where our families didn't know where bike and walking paths were in our community, and probably White Hills is one of those communities that is really well served by existing infrastructure. I, find, I found that incredible, but I guess if we're a car-based society and people do not get out of their cars, they don't necessarily know that those paths exist. So we've got some work to do there. But that notion of building, building it and they will come, I don't think is enough. With 56% uh, of adults in the Greater Bendigo area either overweight or obese, I think we've lost our way over past decades and we have a lot of work to do when it comes to changing attitudes to active travel. I'm sure the adults who are here today, and certainly of my era, we can talk about how we rode or walked to school every day and how we'd be off in the afternoons and on weekends and holidays we'd be off on our bikes and we'd only come home when we were hungry. But uh, we've lost that, lost those practices, lost those attitudes and we probably need to work more actively to get them back. I believe schools are in a unique position to change those attitudes. City of Greater Bendigo can work on the infrastructure. We can certainly work hard as schools to turn that attitude around active transport. We know from our results, for example, up here on the board, that 86% of our students want to actively travel to school. So there really needs to be an attitudinal change there too. And we believe we can achieve that. But where do we go from here as a school? The report makes three recommendations. That we increase awareness of the existing bike and walking paths and promote their use within the school community. That we facilitate group meeting points at agreed locations to enable children to travel in groups. And finally, that we map the locations of family residences to determine who lives where. 
Now, some of the plans that we have to address those three recommendations include, we're looking towards our student leaders being, or being at agreed locations at particular times so that younger children can travel with them into school. We believe students are best placed to do that. We've seen other programs where it involves adults like the walking school bus or riding to school groups where it hinges on one adult and if that adult leaves or is unavailable, the whole scheme falls apart. So unfortunately those type of things are, have been failures. We believe the key is to having children involved. We also plan to continue working with City of Greater Bendigo. We want to be involved in the Map My Neighbourhood project because we believe that families need to be able to identify where that local bike and pedestrian infrastructure is, where other White Hills, Pro, uh, White Hills Primary School families are located so that they can group together for more active transport. We thank you for your attendance today and we know that we've got a lot more work to do in the Greater Bendigo area when it comes to active travel. We see ourselves as a bit of a, uh, well we are, a pilot project and we hope that the, this uh, same approach can be pushed out to other school communities and ultimately lead to Bendigo being a more livable city into the future and that the residences are actively travelling within the Greater Bendigo area. Thank you very much for your attendance. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Ethan. As a student leader and someone who rides their bike every day to school, I'm determined to be involved in improving active travel in our school community. In this afternoon's in closing this afternoon's launch, we would encourage the Greater Bendigo community to view the Stage 4 Consultants Report and providing feedback to Council by filling in an online survey, emailing the Strategy Unit, sending a letter to Trevor Budge, Strategy Unit Manager, making an appointment to meet the Strategy Team, or attending the Advertised Community Listening Post locations during October, November and December. We thank you for your attendance and now invite questions from the media. Also with City of Greater Bendigo, uh, we put in an application, wasn't it, uh, Trevor, for funding support for the Map My Neighbourhood project, but unfortunately we were unsuccessful this time, but we're, we're determined to continue one, that Trevor. process. Gone into a second one. Gone into a second one. Yep. Yeah, you're a resilient person, Trevor, aren't you? <laughs> Don't take no for an answer. Any other questions, particularly uh, from our parent community, you may uh, want to ask about or mention some of the things that we've been involved in. Certainly here at the school we have many, many programs to ensure our children are active at all times. My name's Kingsley, I have two children here at the school. Um, we actually have a difficulty doing active travel from our home to here because of a lack of infrastructure in our outer area um, and would strongly encourage and are pleased to see the progress that's being made in this area because uh, we, my wife and I would strongly believe that our active children are our future. They're the ones that are, keep us going as well. You know, it's hard to keep up with them these days. They're pretty fit and fast. Um, and Damien, you put me on the spot here. I wasn't quite ready. <laughs> uh, as a school councillor, um, I've been involved in the school for what, four years now, I think, and the changes that the school population has undergone over the last four years, um, the population growth and just the demographic of the school and where our students are sourced from has grown and changed quite significantly. And this sort of program and the broad scope that it encompasses in all the areas is uh, really encouraging. and. The communication with the parents that we've been able to do through the school, through the council, and the feedback we get, not just through the school, but through other parents like myself, in the car park after work, after school, um, is all quite positive. We do have the consultant's report, but City of Greater Bendigo certainly haven't stood still when it comes to improving infrastructure. Already around our school, Kingsley has mentioned that our enrolment growth, for example, has gone from a school four years ago in the high 300s. Currently we're 580 students. 
Basically, we've grown 50 students or two classes every year for the past four years. And that's put incredible strain on the surrounding roads and infrastructure, as you can appreciate. And the staff at Strategy, at the City of Greater Bendigo, and uh, other staff or other areas have worked very much in consultation with the school and we're very grateful for that. And just to point out a couple of those things that have been implemented, if you take a visit to the rear of the school in Boscot Street, the Botanic Gardens streetscape extension is currently underway and uh, we had quite a good deal of input into that and we're very grateful for it. It's meant that we have additional parking out the back we also have a school crossing at the back of the uh, oval, which will again create a safe environment for our children. And we're also looking at links at the uh, back of the school onto the existing bike path. So we're very grateful for that sort of um, City of Greater Bendigo inviting us to have that input. We're also uh, also just been announced is a new roundabout here up at the Raglan and Plumridge Street corners, which again will create a much more safer environment for our children, whether they're on their bikes or scooting or as pedestrians. So we're looking forward to that continued association.